Hello, everybody. Welcome to Alien Addict on this fine Saturday evening. Um, before we get started and bring our guest and the rest of the panel on, I would like you to go away and do the like, the share, and subscribing. Remember that we've got audio only episodes up on the podcast um, that's available everywhere. We've got the new line of merch, we've got the um, Alien Addict t shirt, we have the Lovecraft Lady t shirt. We have the Retro Mothman t-shirt. We also have the Illuminati Rockstar t-shirt and the t-shirt we are launching this evening, especially because we have Mark Sargent on. We have our Flat Earth t-shirt as well. Um, without further ado, uh, Ollie, Dave, Mark Sargent, how are you all doing? Hey, guys, and thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And by the way, you know what? I retract what I said before the show, which is I want that intro. Who made, who made that in intro for you? That's Ollie. Well done. Well sure. done. That hit so many fun beats. I, Of course, I know all of them intimately, and it was awesome. I was actually – normally during intros, I like go get a cup of coffee or whatever it is and be like – I was like, I'm, I'm going to watch this whole thing. This is really, really cool. So, So thank you for that. Is, Appreciate the key that. is his tiny hands. All he has <laughs> unbelievably tiny hands in a tiny keyboard. And well, he it works so swiftly. It's like an elf. <laughs> he's he's one quarter elf. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, um, that's awesome. And by the way, I like the new. I like the shirt too. Yeah, that's yeah. That, that's the new line of merch we've, we've brought out. And uh, I'm not a flat I, earther, I, but. Yeah. It is. It's it's for what? Uh, it, it's for everyone's flat curious friends. I think for every every yeah. flat earther should buy one of those for the flat curious friend. Well, and, well, not just flat curious, but people that uh, just do not want to make that claim. They don't want to put their their stake in the in the ground and say, "No, I'm a flat earther." I mean, even some of our best speakers, Rob, the late Rob Skiba, for at least a year said that. It's like mm -hmm. I'm 98. percent I'm 98 percent in, but. <laughs> I've got some things and or the montage that they used in the uh, the Netflix documentary behind the curve, mm -hmm. which uh, used the part of the thumbnail for, it, which was the there was all, all sorts of celebrities be like, no, 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 I'm not. But you know, that it's, it's their disclaimer to just get out of the harassment in case something goes wrong. Um, I always wondered that about the um, the the flat Earth documentary that, uh, or like I suppose it was mockumentary the way it, it ended up being done yeah. by um, Logan Paul. Like oh was, that thing, yeah. Oh. So was was did Logan or Logan always do that that, that as like a comedy bit? Oh, it was he, always oh it was always yeah. it was always going to be a comedy bit. But the thing was, he kept it a secret. So what he did was he bribed our promoter. Uh, Robbie Davidson, who was doing the the conferences for those th first three years, and he basically bought him bought like a whole bunch of VIP tickets and hotel rooms and on all this crap, and said, "Look, I'm I'm gonna load you up on the front end. Don't tell anyone I'm coming until I actually show up." And the and then Robbie, he he uh, to his word, he he kept the secret. And then we found out we were already at the conference, and we were found out the night before I was supposed to go on stage, and. I remember David Weiss, he came up to me, he goes, he goes, it's Logan Paul. And I go, what? It can't be Logan Paul. He's a, he's a jackass. He's a professional idiot. Right. And it's like, he's, I don't, he goes, who is he? I don't know who he is. Nobody knew because Logan's demographic skews so young. Right. Mm -hmm. They're like junior high boys. That That's his demographic. And because of all the pranks that he does. And I tried to tell, I, I was one of the few people that I said, don't you remember? He was like blacklisted from the, from the internet because he did that suicide forest in Japan, yeah. you know, not that long ago, but the internet, you know, has a attention span of a goldfish. And so, um, I, I, I grabbed as many people as I could for dinner that night before. And I said, dude, you, you or guys, you can't, you can't let him. And, and somebody said, oh yeah, by the way, he's going on stage. I go, what? Oh yeah. He's going on before you. I go, are you out of your minds? And so I walked. I walked out of the conference. I, I said, "That's it. I'm I'm gone. See ya." Uh, and so, I mean, I was in such denial. I was even with that morning before I jumped on the plane. I said, "There's no way, no way." Now, to Logan's credit, professional idiot he might be, and blight of the internet he and his brother are, even now. And I'm so glad he's actually doing professional wrestling now. 
It's like, good, you can just beat yourself up into a pulp. I don't care. And your and your brother's doing fake boxing matches even better. In fact, has that Tyson thing happened yet? No, yeah. he hasn't happened yet. Yeah, whatever. Fake boxing matches. Hi, I know. Let's get a bunch of money and pay retired celebrities, sports celebrities, to box against me. And then, again, work the gambling angle of it and, and make some money off of it. Hype it up. So, but to his credit, he was one of he was the first big big channel to tr to troll us mm. because the, he he had his guys research. Okay, what's hot on the internet? And back then, we were just absolutely red hot. Uh, in fact, the next year, uh, Jimmy Kimmel from the Late Show, he he came on or he he did a, like a seven minute skit on us, sent a full blown team, and he let us know in advance that he was going to troll us. But what he didn't tell us was he hired an infiltrator, one of his guys, to like dress up as a flat earther and pay full ticket and come in and not tell anybody and and had him had him mic'd up the entire time mm -hmm. for the skit. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Good move. Anyway, sorry, I ramble. No, no, no. Um for, for anyone in, in the chat here that um might not know you, I imagine lots of people that are gonna listen to this are gonna know you anyway. The uh how right, how did you first get into this? Because like we're um, when I was sort of, I mean, you, it, it must be what ten years ago, something like nine, that? nine, ten years, yeah. nine. The uh, I was it. I remember um, I came across you first, like as far as any of the flat, flat Earth stuff I, I, on podcasts and things like that. Lee, yeah. he's and, the um, godfather of Flat Earth. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Well, there uh, were there were three of us back in the day. So in 2014. I looked into it because that's when it, that was, I was out in Colorado and I had gone through because I never got married. So I had tons and tons of free time on my hands to go down every rabbit hole you could think of. And I looked at just about everything you could think of. And I was like, I'm, I'm not I was like, I'll look at everything, but I'm not going to look at Flat Earth. It's kind of like the Stephen Wright joke. It's like I'm going to sing you every song the Beatles ever wrote. I'm not going to sing all of Hey Jude because it's just too freaking long. And so I tried I, I i was like okay i'll look at flat earth and i couldn't get rid of it meaning i couldn't just toss it out there was too, too many loop threads i was pulling on that were leading to other things and meanwhile uh while i was doing it matt boylan from canada he was from montreal mm -hmm. otherwise known as math powerland one of the worst stage names ever it's like change your name from matt boylan to math powerland i mean it's memorable i'll give you mm -hmm. that but, but that was about it. And then another guy out of the Philippines named, um, wait, Thailand, Whew, Philippines, Thailand, um, right? Yeah, Thailand, uh, um, called, his name was Eric Dubay, and he was doing stuff. And I made the clues in, I ended up running out of, of ways to try to prove the globe in a court of law anymore. So I, February of 2015, that's when I made the, the Flat Earth Clues. And which was really just a cry for help. I, I was uh, put it out on the internet and said, "Okay, internet hive mind, who is much smarter than me as a as a mass, tell me where I screwed up. Tell me where I where I screwed this whole uh, thing up." And they, instead of people calling me and saying, "Oh, okay, this is where you screwed up," you know, you can shut down your YouTube channel. I had just everybody else call me. You know, military subject matter experts and media, very few trolls, and that's how I got into it. And again. February 2015 is when it started, and here we are, nine years later, and it's just. In fact, if it wasn't for the pandemic, who knows what what would what have happened? Because we just we. In fact, in 2019, by the end of 2019, we were golden. We could do no wrong. We were we were doing conferences in all sorts of different countries, and media loved us. Uh, and then the beginning of 2020, I remember I was supposed to go back to London, and they said, "Oh yeah, sorry, you can't go. The borders are closed." It's like why? Yeah. And you guys know the rest of that. Um, do what? What? What was the moment where it started getting suppressed on YouTube? Because oh, again, oh. Like back then when I was looking at um, mm -hmm. conspiracies and stuff like that, there was there was a hot minute there where everything was flat Earth stuff on it YouTube exploded. Yeah, yeah. I'll um, let me see if I can copy link. I'll put it. I'll, I'll tell. I'll show you exactly when it happened. It happened right here. I put it in chat. And so what happened was we were, in fact, there's a playlist that goes along with this, believe it or not. It's called, one second, playlist. It is called the Flat Earth Metrics Timeline. 
and I'll put the playlist to that in chat as well. So what was happening was in 20 from 2015 to 20 yeah that's the senate hearing <laughs> when when the head of the the youtube when they when you know it's bad when government and youtube get together for a public setting and the youtube's laying down its new rules but before this uh, i'll tell you really fast what happened was so from 2015 to 2018 in fact i'll send you the i'll send you the link to that i'll, I'll send you the preface to that so there was one second uh give me a sec copy link so what you didn't know in 2015 youtube changed its algorithms and beforehand what what was recommended for you on youtube was done manually by groups of people they would like it's like okay what's hot and what's not and let's see what we can we can do it but as you know youtube was just growing and growing and growing it's the biggest it's the biggest network in the world literally lifetimes of content are ad ad added every month. You will never, ever, ever finish in a thousand years YouTube. But, I mean, most of it's crap, but who cares, right? So in 2015, they changed the algorithm to an AI version to where AI was picking what was recommended for you. And that last link I sent you, a lot of people don't know, it was done, it came down to one guy. So it was a French programmer and he developed the the software for this and basically it was it was a positive reinforcement tool so and he and i highly recommend if you get you don't have to watch it now but watch that last video offline where what was happening was they were it was it was it was shotgun patterning different topics for you it's like hey do you like tractor maintenance no okay hey you like potato salad recipes no okay oh you like that flat earth video okay we're going to recommend two more Oh, you like to a couple of those? Yeah, we're going to recommend three more. And it just started snowballing, right? To where Flat Earth was being recommended to, to quote, hundreds of millions of times. And before they, before anyone knew what was happening, he realized that most of the videos that were being recommended were flat, were, were pro Flat Earth videos, right? And so in, uh, you know, uh, YouTube is owned by Google, right? The, one of the biggest search engines in the world, if not the biggest. And anyone knows anything about search engines, there when you search for anything, there's a search results equals a number, right? And at the beginning of 2015, that number in YouTube was like 50,000. And that includes videos and references and, and different links and stuff. So a composite of 50,000. By the time we got to the summer of 2018, we were at 20.9 million, which is a huge jump, massive, massive jump. And we were everywhere, right? In fact, I was keeping the, the second link I sent you was a playlist to the scoreboards. And what I was doing was I was looking and comparing. I was just running. It's like, okay, show me what Warcraft comes up with for search results. Show me what PewDiePie comes up with search, search results. The Beatles, The Simpsons, NASA, and so on and so on. We were crushing them. Absolutely freaking crushing them all. And, and by, by that, I mean not the number of subs, but the number of search results, meaning how many people look it up and make videos that are tied to it. It's one thing like, you, you know, say, oh, yeah, Pew PewDiePie at the time had like 60 million subs, but he only had 5 million search results, which means not many people were making videos about PewDiePie. Not many people were talking about PewDiePie, right? Lots of people were talking about us. So in 2018, we hit 20.9 million. And I know this because I made a video literally called, it's on my channel, called Flat Earth Catches the President of the United States because President Trump then was coming in at 20.8 million. And I made this video and somebody didn't like that very much because what happened almost immediately afterwards, almost about the same time this thing came out, that little video there with Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Downs. You want me to hit play on that, Mark? Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead, play it. Play it. it's a good, it's good look at sure. here. That's the first one, is we want to provide users with authoritative, trustworthy Downs, information. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I only have a minute and a half, and I, I, I don't really need to hear what you're trying to provide. I want to know how you're dealing with all these conspiracy theorists on your platform. So the, the first way is by demoting low quality content and promoting more authoritative content. And the second is by providing more transparency for users. So we're introducing boxes that provide factual information at the top of results that have shown themselves to turn up a lot of information that is counterfactual, such as searching for the earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of- Your response is to put a box up. saying, nope, the earth is not flat. Correct. Okay, I have a question, Ms. Bickard, for you. You recently decided Okay, Don't so, oh, wait, 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 before we, before we play that one, I do want you to play that one. 
the um, which is very very interesting. So if you guys know when it comes to conspiracies, because of us, people say, "Oh, it's delusional." No, no, that that is the Senate hearing where it started. Mm -hmm. The wiki entry that shows up underneath certain videos, where you know whatever conspiracy it is, there's a wiki entry for it. That's because of what we did. We were the first wiki entry. So underneath any flat earth videos, maybe even possibly this one, you'll see a wiki entry underneath the banner so with, a, with a direct link that goes to wiki and you, and you can go to wiki and it'll say, oh, flat earth is an archaic concept and no one ever should you know look at it. It's obviously scientifically disproven, blah, blah, blah. And they just include this for anything else you could think of. No matter what it is, now there is a wiki link, wiki link to that. And... At the same time, what she also was saying is, we're also going to promote authoritative content, right? Meaning, I caught that. I caught yeah, that. Yeah, not, yeah, not factual. She doesn't yeah. say we're going to put factual content. No, out. it's authoritative. not authoritative. Yeah, authoritative. Ma mainstream news, big channels with their check boxes already on them. That sort of stuff. We're going to promote those more. And yeah, if you type in flat Earth into YouTube right now, you can scroll down, and the first fifty videos are all check marks. You know, they're all they're all verified channels. In fact. I was told just this year, I will never get a check mark because I promote things that are a little dicey for them. The nice way of saying it's like, oh, you went against the WHO, you went against the CDC, you you talk about false flags and all sorts of other crap. And it's like, all right, fine. I don't have to have my check mark. I don't care. And they'll say, oh, by the way, you're not going to be monetized either. It's like, all right, dicks. So what they, <laughs> what they, and and they and and what they what they said there was they're going to recommend us less. In fact, I had uh, people all over our community start emailing me. It's like, do you notice the monetization starting to go down? This is before we were cut off entirely, and uh, and I mean to the tune of like seventy percent, like right away. So if you were making a grand a month off of uh, off of YouTube stuff content, you were now making three hundred a month mm. uh, off of it. Was it was brutal. So I, I want you, if you get a chance, how long is that video, the the French guy? It's not very long, uh, but the first part's pretty good. Is it like a couple minutes? Three minutes. Uh, is it worth it? Can can we? Uh, yeah. Can, can yeah. We play it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I want I want to preface this because this this is how things. Want, you want to know why we got so big? It was because of this. So this guy, this French guy, was basically. I'll sum it up for you while he's talking, but it's it's worth worth, worth listening to, which is. He yeah. basically says that the algorithm was promoting flat earth so heavily that they were like, oh, this is a great thing. Because remember, they're, they're a network. They wanted a binge topic like Netflix or anybody else. Mm -hmm. And the, the question was, and you'll get to it towards the end, and I love it, which is, I remember, there are thousands and thousands of topics on YouTube. He brings up one. It's us. Right, and this is a this is the YouTube guy, and he says, "Well, if the average person that gets into YouTube uh, gets into flat Earth watches twenty videos in a row, it goes down a rabbit hole. What do you think we're going to recommend?" Right, it, we, they have found their binge topic, and it's like, oh, so all of a sudden, it's like, "Oh wow, YouTube, we you know we're generating all this money." I mean, they made so much money off of us, but then all of a sudden, it's like, "Wait a minute, is what we're doing wrong?" Because we're promoting this conspiracy, we're not we're not shutting this thing down in any way. We're actually helping it. We were shamelessly promoted. So go ahead, go ahead and run it if you don't mind. Double tilt in the recommendations. It seemed to favor extreme content. No matter where you start, YouTube always seemed to want to send you somewhere a little bit more crazy. What Guillaume was seeing was algorithmic extremism. So today on the show, Guillaume Chaslow. AI expert and founder of the nonprofit Algo Transparency will explain why, for the sake of humanity, we must shed light on these algorithms. I'm Tristan Harris. And I'm Isa Raskin. This is your undivided attention. I edited this, so. Why are the thing I'm hearing you saying is that because the AI doesn't have a sense of the recommendations and doesn't have a sense of what's right and what's wrong, all it has a sense for is what works, yep. that we're sort of A-B testing our way the smartest supercomputers pointed at our minds to find sort of the soft underbellies to just be like, what's effective? And so we're A-B testing our way towards anti-morality or immorality or amorality. Yep. Are there any specific examples that like can light up my mind? Like the flat earth conspiracy theory, for instance, got hundreds of millions of recommendations for something. Hundreds of millions of recommendations. Yeah, it's like for something that's completely absurd. So one of the arguments was like, we're just showing what people make. But that's not true because if you search on YouTube, is yes flat or not, you had 35% of search results were flat earth conspiracy theories. 
but then if you followed recommendations, uh, like I followed uh, thousands of recommendations and then took like the 20 most recommended videos on the out of these 20 most recommended video, uh, 90% were flat earth conspiracy theories. Mm, 90%, that's insane. Well, so I think um, one thing that people tend to, to think about with this is, I mean, if you just go back to the, just the simple human experience of YouTube, like why are we spending all this time? And the average watch time per day is 60 minutes now. The YouTube product officer, uh, chief product officer, Neil Mohan said, it's because our recommendations are getting that good. So the, wa the reason that watch time is going up is because the recommendation system is getting stronger and stronger and stronger every year. And we're not talking about the fact that this is a huge asymmetry of power. They have supercomputers. I mean, who has the biggest supercomputers yes. in the world? It's Google and it's Facebook. This reality is the result of a deliberate and entirely reasonable business decision YouTube made years ago. In order to scale up, YouTube got rid of human editors who were in charge of curating recommendations and turned to AI instead. The algorithm is only feeding you one side. So after watching like 20 videos of flat earth videos, some people will start believing, wow, that, that might actually be true. And for the algorithm, it was like a fantastic win to have uh, someone watch 20 videos in a row. Remember, the more time you spend on YouTube, the more ads they can sell. But now the company is grappling with the unintended consequences of favoring videos that keep you on the site longer, regardless of content. That's basically it. So, yeah, you kind of get the idea of of what happened. What happened there? I mean, we were we were just getting recommended, and recommended, and then it's again they didn't hit the brakes on us. No flat Earth channel was shut down for flat Earth, but they tried to make it less appetizing. So it's like, okay, we're gonna de we're gonna monetize you much much less, and some of you we're gonna demonetize entirely, and we're gonna recommend you less on top of it and shadow ban you as much as humanly possible. By the by, then it was too late. We were everywhere, you know, we, and every platform since then has been proliferated with our, with our content. It was like, Hey, great. Fantastic. Mm. So there you go. It, it, it almost feels like, um, YouTube did what the sort of, uh, VHS and DVD industry did with pornography. You know, they, they, they used conspiracy theories to build their brand and then tried to pull away from it as soon as, as soon as their brand was built. Right. Or, or kind of, um, I'll even give you another analogy. How about uh, if you guys are old enough to remember the whole Napster thing mm -hmm. back yeah. in the day where Napster, the, the record companies were ignoring everybody. Remember, it was supposed to be iTunes before there was iTunes. That was the whole point of Napster. If you, have, if you never watched the wonderful documentary, I think it was called Downloaded. It's fantastic. Where the, the, the guy that did Napster... He, he went to the record companies. He's like, look, I found it. I have, I have built a new distribution center for you, right? All you have to do, and they're like, we don't need you, blah, blah, blah. It's like, fine, assholes. I'm going to give it up for free. Bam, 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 bam. And all these universities were crashing servers because all the poor college students were downloading entire music stores worth of, worth of music. The point there was when they, when they finally ended up suing him and driving Napster into the ground, Napster died, but... In the process, the MP3 was already born, and you couldn't pull back the technology of the MP3. Everyone knew how to build it. And so, and that's what the, the heavy tech guys that went to the Senate hearing said. It's like, oh, yeah, you can kill Napster all you want. Everybody, all the nerds know how to build MP3s now, so everyone's going to be ripping their music right and left. And yes, in the end, uh, the record industry lost billions, billions and billions of dollars permanently. Uh, they lost half their revenue. I mean, what, I mean, again, everyone's a moral and just person, but come on. When you can trade, you know, two a three thousand song list for for a pizza to to a, to a guy that lives in the dorm room down the hall, what do you think you're going to do? Of course you're going, mm -hmm. of course you're going to do that, and they did. Mark, I, I'm not I'm not a flat earther. Uh oh, but, that's but, a problem. But <laughs> yeah, but um, how dare you, sir? When I was when I was when I was doing the uh, the research to make the uh, the intro, right. I found it extremely difficult to find anything to the if to what I remember the footage that it, it seems like it's almost scrubbed. I even I even struggled with Rumble for so, for, for, uh... for any kind of um, footage photographs. So I'm wondering, do you guys get things sent in like the UFO community do when it comes to like we like 
every man and his dog see the UFO. Do you right. get like anybody send alleged pictures of Antarctica, like the war or anything like that? Do you, do you no, no, no. And uh, okay. First off, as far as the the photo of flat Earth, which you know lots of people ask for, it's like no, of course not. I mean, this this is if this is the biggest secret that I could ever think of, you know, next to the existence of another civilization or God or you know some sort of divine power, then it's and they've been working to keep this thing a secret since 1960, roughly. Then any of that stuff, no, nothing's gained out of Antarctica, which is why again why the Antarctic Treaty was put into place in 1959. Which is, no, no, they locked down the outer edge and then they militarized space literally in the same year, in 1959. The Van Allen radiation belts were announced in 1959 and said no one should ever go up there, ever, because it's super deadly. No one should ever, ever go up there. And by the way, Antarctica, no corporation can set up shop in Antarctica forever. Doesn't matter how deep your pockets were. And that was, you know, most people that get into flat earth, they get in because of long distance photography and, and stuff like, you know, the, the actual curvature of the earth. But for me, it was the Antarctic Treaty because everybody knows, and you guys are all in, I mean, you guys, two of you are in the UK and one of you here is in the States. Look, this, this world runs off of greed and money and power. It's capitalism, baby. That's what we do, right? And yet these same corporations, which have gobs and gobs of liquid cash, you know, the, the same corporations that could start fracking in your neighbor's backyard tomorrow, right? These corporations can't even touch Antarctica. In fact, not only can they not touch them, they can't even, this is the part that got me. They're not even allowed to talk about it. That's the part that got me. It was like, people protest stuff all the time. That's why you run full page ads, right? Full page ads in any newspaper, especially like the London Times, for example. You should run, BP should be down in Antarctica. Well, how great it would be for BP to start drilling in Antarctica. They're not even allowed to do that. Why not? Well, you can put it under the guise of national security. But no, that place is locked down tighter than drum. The closest you can get is you can pay, and I'll, I'll do it in, in British pounds for you, say 12,000 pounds, right? But And go to the coastline of Antarctica, have some pictures taken, some penguins, and you know, put on your, your orange giant jumpsuit and walk, you know, float around in a raft. That's about as close as you can get. And the rest of but you want to go on your own, the, the, the process is amazing. You have to spend gobs of money, have multiple countries. By the way, sorry, so little side note, which was in my clues, why is Antarctica, the entire continent, not owned by anyone? You can't find a square foot of land in the rest of the world that isn't owned by someone, right? Property, everything is owned. Not Antarctica. Why not? No, no. Don't want to talk about it. The only people that are allowed down there are the military and military scientists. There you go. But to your point, the, the community is tight enough to where, yes, we look for anything that comes in and it's screened pretty pretty quickly. You know, nothing, videos don't generally get made unless there's some sort of consensus, very informal consensus, where it gets passed around. You know, someone, yes, every once in a while, someone will say, oh, look, here's a, a grainy video from the 1950s of the wall or the firmament. It's like, okay, and they pass it around. People will open up. We got some pretty decent tech guys and they'll, they'll look at it and they'll go, nope, nope, not buying it. And that's it. And it just dies in committee right then and there. So... The rest of it, the, most of the people that, that are in our community that, that get brought in, get brought in for long distance photography more than anything. And I had that had nothing to do with me. The clues, I never at once told anyone to go down to a beach with a decent camera and start shooting long distance video, lighthouses and boats and oil rigs and crap like that. And it's like, why? In fact, I questioned them. It's like, why are you even doing this? It's like, well, because water lays perfectly flat and the curvature formula is this. Therefore, we should not see objects at this distance and this distance. It's like, really? Huh? I'll be damned. So I find it. that quite quite interesting. Is, is it the P900? Is that or P1000? Yeah. Well, there's the, the one I wouldn't say we endorse. It's just something we grabbed out there. People tend to follow. Um, the P900 was the first. Then there was the P1000. There was a P950 mid-range with ridiculous zoom i will mm -hmm. say this the future was denied to us in a lot of different things you know we wanted everybody wanted the jetsons i know this dates me you guys probably never watched the jetsons you know the flying cars the robot servant why she was overweight i have no idea you know the cities that were built on on giant seriously it doesn't make any sense right why not have a sexy servant robot why did she have to be is, is a comment on the servant class there, that, must, <laughs> that must be it and she even had a weird accent it's like seriously it's like wouldn't you want the best you know oh, whatever anyway 
So the point is that we didn't get any of those things. We didn't get ray guns or teleporters or anything like that. Well, you know, not for allegedly. Civilian, but allegedly, yeah. We didn't get flying cars. That's for a whole different reason. And but what we did get was we got really good computers and we could, to where we shrunk them down and we can put computers in everything. And so digital zoom for cameras, we wouldn't even be talking now if it wasn't for digital zoom, hmm. uh, because you can do all sorts of, you know, 20 years ago, three thousand dollars shoulder mounted Sony cam would still be grainy as hell. If you're trying to shoot a boat off in the distance, now you can pick up a six hundred dollar off the rack, nothing and zoom in on crap all day long. And hmm. it's amazing. And just keeps getting cheaper and better every year. So I don't remember what the original question was. <laughs> I, w I was just going to say, do you find it weird? Because I know they're going to—they're taking that camera off the market, aren't they? Without a uh, well, yeah, but that's just one camera. Digital di digital zoom wasn't proprietary to Nikon. Um, right, di okay. Digital zoom is everywhere now, and I—I I don't know why. No, it just got dated. I mean, the P one thousand has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the 900 still works just as well. And, and there's also, if it wasn't that, it would have been something else. I was a little surprised that Nikon didn't approach us because we know full well that we sold them a lot of freaking cameras. Just yeah. about everybody in our community was buying Nikon cameras and nobody, nobody hit us up for endorsements. Endorsements were few and far between. Um, the, the closest we ever got to a big one. I mean, I did a couple, but the biggest one uh, that was on the table was McDonald's. And that was for a UK thing because I didn't know you guys do this. You guys have something called Pancake Day. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. a that's a thing, right? That is Stroke, a thing. Stroke, Stroke Tuesday. That's yeah. So weird. No wonder you people are subjects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck man. Pancake Day. So McDonald's called me up and they said, "Hey, would you like to come out to the UK and do a commercial for Pancake Day? Because you know the flat Earth it's round and it's circle." We'll, we'll overlay the map on top of some pancakes digitally. It'd be really cool. I go, yeah, sweet. And of course, I was supposed to go out there in March of 2020. Yeah, yeah that, that no, didn't. Oh no. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Nikon. They absolutely should have signed us up for for certain things. Anyway, um, do, do you find it difficult now, uh, like growing the movement, considering how how locked down things are? Um, yes. Yeah, well, it's different. So it, with everything, I, I believe that I, I kind of a believer in the matrix, you know, the, the equation tries to balance itself out. So when the pandemic hit, you, yeah, like our international conferences were stunted. Our European van tour, that was off the freaking table. Uh, I didn't do it. I haven't done any international travel since uh, February 2020. However, since it put people back in their homes and locked them down, as we were talking about earlier, People were running out of stuff to watch and you can watch YouTube on television all day long. And that's what people were doing. It's like, it's only a question of, it's only, it's a slippery slope to go from a Netflix documentary to a YouTube rabbit hole or whatever it is. And people were going down rabbit holes to where the, the documentary behind the curve all of a sudden showed back up in the top 10 of Netflix, even though it had already run its three year course during the, the, its initial contract. It's like, Oh no, it's back in because people were home. It's like, I got to watch something. I'm going nuts here. I don't want to talk to the wife. <laughs> so that, that, yeah, it, it hurt us in that sense. But at the same time, even though there were mandates, we couldn't do meetups. In fact, uh, Karen B from the, the channel, Karen B, she was doing conferences. She was the only one doing conferences for us in South Carolina because she found an event center that didn't require masks. It was, turns out it was a, um, a Mason, it was a Shriners Convention Center, right? And people were giving us crap. It's like, yeah, but it's the Masons. I'm going, you know what? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I'll take it. <laughs> <They're just laughs> old guys that like fish dinners. Yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> Let's get drunk and play ping pong. Yeah, exactly. that whole thing. So because they don't want to go home and talk to their wives. Exactly. Right. It was a it was a guys club. So yeah, we we did the Shriners Convention thing for three years, and that was a blast. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, that it was between that and the stunting that you guys watched from 2018, they were doing everything they could to to slow us down. Again, not hitting the brakes but they took their foot almost entirely off the gas. But we still keep growing. I mean, the the Flatter Sun, the, you know, the app, our big app, the Flatter Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, I think still going like gangbusters, which is great. I was amazed, actually, when uh, when Dave was on the show a few weeks ago. Yeah. I, one of the things he pulled up, wrong Dave, Dave. Um, yeah. when, um, I'm here all the time. What are you talking about? One of the things he pulled up was the uh, the map with all the people that have got the, the blue dots. Spot. Yeah. That was incredible. I had no yeah. idea there was that you would have sold that many like apps to people. Like, it was like impressive. That. Crazy. 
Yeah. And then remember, those are the people that are willing to have themselves be blue dots, yes. you know, to where yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, you know what? I acknowledge. I mean, I've got a I've got a list of on my channel of celebrities that um, you know, let's see if I can find out. I'll send you the, the link. The uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, mainstream media. One sec. The of celebrity. I mean, I run into I, there's two types. There's celebrities. They'll be like, I'm on the fence. You know, I, I, I want to be a flat earther, but. And then there are others that are all in, but it, well, there's like people that I can't even put on this list because they don't want to come out. Uh, you know, like an actor on on one of the uh, I think it's a Se the SEAL Team television show. I remember we were at a thing in Los Angeles, and and he was spent all day with us. And at the end, he comes up to me, he goes, "I was never here." <laughs> <It's> like, <"Damn> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um, but I still try to out like one of the biggest television stars of all time, Kelsey Grammer. I hung out at his house. You know, yeah, he was talking. To, he's totally. it's like. Yeah, it's like how, how and he, I remember it was, a, it was such a great night. I, I was there with Rob Skiba and Patricia Steer. And he goes, You want to know how I found out about Flat Earth? I'm going, Okay, sure. How'd you find out? He goes, He goes, Amy Adams told me at the Oscars after party. And I go, Get out. And, he, and I go, How's that go? And he goes, She hates it. So we were, you know, what, you know, a lot of, lot of uh, entertainers are really into conspiracies, right? You know, they're anti-government and they, they get drunk and they whisper and they talk about stuff. And she apparently walks in to a room of people talking about conspiracy stuff. You know, they're all whispering. And she goes, you know what? You can put all that BS to bed. Let me tell you the crap my father's into. Flat Earth. And she just starts railing against Flat Earth. Well, as any producer will tell you, it doesn't matter whether you love or you hate a topic, as long as you're talking about the topic. And so people were like looking up on their phones, like, what's Amy so worked up about? Click, 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 click. And, you know, they were, you know, everyone, she converted people just by yelling at Flat Earth. So when people, when there's trolls, people come out against us, like Logan Paul or PewDiePie or, or uh, and, you know, some of those people on the list, you know, that, that, that hate us, uh, I don't, I don't mind. Sure. Go ahead. It's, you know, the, the old saying is still true, which is, um, it's not that, all press is good press. It's even bad press is free. And you it's a force multiplier. So I know you guys you you, you always say do the research yourself. Like yeah. When you're speaking to your audience, you like don't don't rely on me. Go go out there, do do the research yourself. Yeah. Are any of you guys um how, how, should, how can I put this? Pl I've tried to do anything when it comes to that's that's cool. Do we, have, you do we, have, you, have you tried to do anything like get a budget together and get us, I don't know, try sneak into Antarctica? Well, okay, the, those thoughts Stale of course around it. Yeah. Usually when it yeah, comes to it. It, first off, the the first part of what you said there, when I say do your own research, and I would I, I'm gonna take credit for coining that. Uh, because I really wanted people to do their own research. It's like, don't just watch a YouTube video, which are so many people do. People are lazy. They, they always will be. Uh, in fact, Jaronism, he, he had, it was a great quote by him, which he goes, he goes, you want to get rich? In, invent something that makes people lazier. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's not wrong. Um, but when it comes to experiments, we usually stick to the, 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 cl the stuff that you can do organized pretty quickly. You know, long distance photography, laser tests, balloon tests, crap like that. When it comes to Antarctica, we had a couple guys, including Rob Skiba back in the day, they tried to go through the permit process because you can't just, if you try to go through the permit process, first off, they're watching everybody that tries to apply for the permit anyway, and they're going to steer you in a certain direction. You're never going anywhere. Now, if you tried to, I'll just say this for you. If you tried to quote unquote, make a break for it, right? You'd have to logistically uh, you're taught it's problematic. For example, let's say you knew somebody with a plane that had long haul capabilities, a plane that could go really, really, really far, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning a fully loaded tanker, triple seven, or even a seven, three, seven with a, extra tanks or whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can find a pilot that's willing to fly out there and ignore GPS. Cause remember GPS is a military system. It's a US DOD system, which we invented in the nineties, which is really just a it's really just the old Duran system from the 60s with a different sticker on it. That's all it is. It's a ground-based system, but they say that it's being run by 32 overlapping satellites, even though the satellites don't seem to work when you get out of ground-based radar range, which I talked about in the clue, which is so strange. So even if you could get a pilot to do that, right? And so you make a break for Antarctica, you just floor it, right? Who cares, right? Ride or die. Let's do a Thelma and Louise on this thing, right? 
that's really what it would kind of turn out like because and once you get over antarctica you have no visual markers because it's just ice and snow and more ice and more snow it's awful right you just screams go away you don't know exactly what you're looking for except maybe some sort of physical barrier you don't know what that looks like exactly because we don't have any Im images of it and even if you could get there right even if you could escape the the military that's going to track you the entire way if not shoot you down or say that you crashed even though they shot you down you can remember they can make up any story they want it's like oh they had engine problems <laughs> oh and none of them survived it was terrible what are you gonna do you see the headlines yeah right i mean oh that'd be a brilliant that'd be a brilliant headline flat earthers crash you know hijack jet and crash in fact they make it look like it was a criminal act like we like we kept like took a pilot hostage right even if you could do all that if just crashed didn't eat each other because they were vegetarians you know easy there you go what what are you gonna do let's say you did it's like holy crap click 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 you know take movies you spin around and you head back which they're, they're not gonna let you you know this is this it, you might you might as well try to go into groom lake area 51 right and make it out right it doesn't happen no one's ever done it no one's ever going to but even if you could who are you gonna tell when you get back meaning uh, there was a wonderful line. If you've never seen the movie, it's a great conspiracy movie uh, called uh, Three Days of the Condor with uh, Robert Redford from from the mid 70s. And it was a it was a it was a great movie because it was a CIA versus CIA spy versus spy crime, which was one CIA branch found something that another CIA branch was doing and shouldn't have. And so they wiped them out. <laughs> and the whole point was chasing the one guy who was at lunch while they wiped the entire office out. And this guy was trying to use his training to to try to. It wasn't a violent movie necessarily, but it was really it was a real thought provoking movie. They gets to the end, and he tells his section chief the big reveal was it's like no 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 I just gave the those guys all the information. It's like the New York Times, right? And the section chief he panics for a second, and, he, and then he smiles. And he's going yeah, but how do you know they're going to run it? And he goes, what do you mean how how do I know? Because they they're, they'll run it. He goes yeah, but how do you know? And it's, the implication was, it's like, no, no, we got people everywhere. We, we have producers. We have hidden producers in just about every media organization. We look for stuff like this. So, no, it is, I, if I had $10 million and the ability to bribe a pilot, I would be skeptical of my own mission in that case. Me, be able to pull it off successfully. It'd be tough. Kind of like, kind of like if somebody came to me. In fact, it'd be easier to do that than it would be if so. I, I've said many times, if somebody came to me with a hundred billion dollars and asked me to fake the, the next man moon mission. I tell them to go to hell because there's no way I could do it because there's going to be production errors. There's no way I could fake it. There's too, the the microscope on the internet is too too focused. So there you go. Sorry, long winded so, answer. So we're going to wait for the hashtag raid Antarctica. Yeah, the Great Antarctica uh, hijack. Yes, I mean think think about what they did when Robbie Davidson, after the Dallas conference, wanted the next conference to be a cruise, right? Not an Antarctic cruise, just a cruise cruise boat that left from Florida. And the reason was, you guys don't know this, but if you do not a lot of promotion, you know, um, if you're a producer for for conferences and crap, you get a lot of hotel rooms free forever. Right, you get you get so many hotel points because you booked so many rooms that you could do things. And he's like, "Well, I, what am I supposed to do with that shit?" So his his idea was like, "Oh no, I'll do a conference on a cruise boat. Therefore, I get free cruise rooms, and then I can sell the cruise rooms. Get it on the back end. It's very sneaky, right?" The media caught wind of this, and for a full freaking year, they called it the Flat Earth or Cruise, and they could have sworn that we were going to go to Antarctica. In this cruise boat, it's like no, it had nothing to do with it. But they ran with it, and it, it was not it was not flattering. It was not fun. Hmm. There you go. I'd love that. I'd love that hashtag to just get started. What? <laughs> Rain right um, Antarctica. <laughs> like, right oh, Antarctica. Dude, it would be it would be epic. And in fact, we've had a couple producers that have toyed with the idea of taking us to Antarctica, just to, just to Antarctica, not 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 taking off in a plane and, and doing thumb on the wheels, yeah. but like landing Antarctica and shooting footage, like looking for the walls going, OK, first off, the United States Navy looked for the freaking edge for 30 years from uh, 1929 up until 1959. And then not only that, but ask any camera guy, it, Antarctica is one of the worst places to shoot ever because it's just white on white on freaking white and there's no definition anywhere. 
And I've told many times, I go, look, you, you want a show finale? You want to do you know, some sort of thing? Shoot at the, the great uh, Bolivian salt flats called the uh, Salar del Uni, which is beautiful, way beautiful, because it gets like a half inch of rain every once in a while. And the whole thing turns into this sheet of glass, and which is 100 miles in any direction. And it's just gorgeous, which again, perfectly flat. The water doesn't pool up anywhere. And you can say, well, it's just a perfectly flat area on a globe. It's like, really? Is it? Because they said the same thing about every salt flat, including Kansas. So apparently there's these tabletop, tabletop areas all over this globe. No. The the topography of, of Antarctica is interesting. Like, I'm not a flat earther, but uh, mm. I, I think it's interesting the hate it gets. It makes me think that there is, there he is, always, always leave with it, man. Nice. I'm not uh, it's the questions I feel like they don't. This particular topic leads to questions that those who try and maintain power over us do not want us asking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah why I mean, have fundamental, a fundamental questions? Why have a treaty? It, you, you guys know, I mean, we know Americans, we, we love treaties because we just love breaking them, right? Treaty that's we, we practically invented breaking treaties as, as fast as humanly possible. Ask the Native Americans. And, um, when it comes to Antarctica, it's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. And when they made it, consider this. They made the treaty in 1959, and they said in 1959, it's not even up for review until 2041. What? What are you talking about? It's 80, 80 years. It's like, why? And nobody even nobody even tried to break it in 80 years. Shows you how. And by the way, the topography that you're talking about, Antarctica yeah. is unique even by mainstream science standards. Yeah. The Most of it sits at 14,000 feet, right? Which is way beyond any other continent, right? Remember, altitude sickness kicks in at half that, at 7,000 feet. And there's no animal life. Penguins, throw them out for now. Penguins, uh, but no animal life, no plant life, no indigenous population. And yet this place is- Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah, there you go. Allegedly, and it is almost bulletproof in terms of how, how it is protected legally, militarily, or the little things like um, the only little, little fun facts like the the only nation that was down there during World War II, but again not not speculation was Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, what are the Nazis doing there? Well, the Nazis had if you know anything about World War II or any history, Indiana Jones was not just a movie. The the Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, mm -hmm. the Germans were absolutely serious about there. There's some things that the old saying, which is uh, all's fair in love and war. The Germans took that to a whole nother level, which was if there's anything out there that will help us end the war, we don't care how ridiculous. Is it Harry Potter's wand? Is that somewhere? Yeah, go get that. Is it Frodo's freaking ring? Yeah, we're, we're going to get that too. The Ark of the Covenant, oh, you better believe we're going after that, right? Mm -hmm. If And if whatever was in Antarctica, that's what they were going after. And so wait, the rest of the world is, is fighting the war. But in World War II, they were there. Again, look it up what happened right after the, the Japan side, the surrender, right? So J Japan surrendered in 1945. Immediately afterwards, we sent a full-blown carrier fleet to Antarctica with support ships, 5,000 infantry, the whole nine yards. Why? Oh, scientific reasons. Really? Wasn't to root out the last Nazi base? Wasn't that? No. No, no, no. They ran away to South America. It wasn't that. And, and I still think to this day that, you know, we're never going to know the, the full story of what happened down there. Mm -hmm. I, the, the story I like is that they asked for asylum when Nazi Germany was down there, meaning they went to the, one of the advanced civilizations, which, of course, you know, if you watch Ancient Aliens, of course, there's advanced civilizations before us. Absolutely, positively. Yeah. They went to one of the advanced civilizations like, hey, can we hang out with you guys? Can we kind of? And I think, I think the guys in question treated it like a, um, uh, Dave will get this, kind of like a junior high dance, which is you can't leave the gym and come back. Meaning you can't get drunk in the parking lot and come back to the freaking dance. I don't know if they do that in the UK, but in America, we're notorious for it, right? It's like, <laughs> once you leave, no, you're gone. You can't come back. You can't cause trouble. And I think with, with Nazi Germany, I think I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll let you come out, come with us. But you're not going back there. I mean, we saw what the damage you guys did in the, the short span that you were you were doing it. So I, I often wonder if that was the one who got assistance. So I, I thoroughly understand that because uh, Oak Ridge is in Tennessee. And we got a huge swath of Operation Paperclip. There you uh, go. In fact, like one of the things I always, you know, we talk about here, and I'm very big into ancient civilizations. And I think the Nazis 
were very much onto they understood technology is in the ground yeah incredible advanced things that are going to yeah. lead us we may not even understand what we're looking at but it's going to get us thinking in a whole new way yeah yeah the the the, the terminator 2 analogy correct which would yeah thank you thinking you're thinking because i i, I look i'm not i'm not I'm, I'm not hyping up the nazis i can't i come from a german family but think about what what they did when they did it it was like they woke uh-huh. up one day and said you know what i think we can take the whole thing what do you mean the whole world pretty sure we can do it uh, almost did. start starting when starting now well, and they they just freaking rolled i would argue they did win uh, you know I, what? I, I can make a convincing argument that they did. They, in fact, they realized that uh, they're a cult. Like my argument would be in a very brief synopsis. Uh, they're a cult made contact with things that at one time we describe as demonic that are really just exist at a different level than we do Yeah, that are here. Yeah. And they said, hey, you can't win it like this, but listen to us and we'll tell you how to. Right. But this is what I need. <laughs> I'm know? sure I'm sure you were a fan of the the show a man in the man in the high castle I have not watched it oh my god how how, how can you not have watched this this is this is right up your alley no be, be, it be, is be, because uh you can't reasons. oh yeah oh, okay gotcha gotcha, uh, gotcha. yeah uh, well, but I mean there's a reason why that I mean I'm a big believer that there were a lot of timelines again if you watch that show a lot of timelines basically People don't understand the the amount of multiple lightning strikes that had to happen for the Germans to lose. They yeah. had this thing. I made a video on it some years ago. It's like no, they they were mopping up. The whole point was to take America without fighting firing a shot because we had so many Germans that were living over here in Minnesota and um, Wisconsin. Uh, I I have been in the Nazi stronghold facilities in northern Wisconsin that are there still used by the federal government and still have swastikas everywhere. There you go. Yeah, um, it was it was a thing. Yeah, they so, like covered up the iron railing with these weird things. Like, what is this plastic thing? And they unclick it. It's a swash to cut, and they click yeah. it back over. I'm like, you could just change out the handrail. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, it was. It was. Why it was, up? It was. You a can't deal. even find a swash sticker in Germany. That's just really weird, isn't it? Oh, I I sent these. I sent you guys pictures of the tiles in the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, still absolutely in use. Absolutely in use today. Uh, it's wild, yeah. But uh, so, so I do think that uh, that Antarctica played a role there, and the the Germans were they knew full well, you know, they if they moved their sub bases there, great. I mean, again, the speculation is rampant, yeah. Uh, but it was the start of when once we got down there. What, let me put it this way: there was this big gap where whatever happened during Operation High Jump between that and when Admiral Byrd. When by the way, thank you for using that clip, the audio clip of Admiral Byrd in the beginning when he was talking on that show where whatever happened by the time he got to the long jeans chronoscope show, which was basically a version of 60 minutes, but whatever problem with the Nazis was already solved. It, you know, high jump was in the rear view mirror and the Americans and the Soviets uh, and the other countries were down there were, were taking over. And once operation deep freeze happened they could not get off the ice fast enough and that's when the the treaty was put in place Mm -hmm. which was weird because um admiral bird during that show said oh yeah well i'm a little worried because there's so many resources a mountain range made out of coal and there's uranium and again he said too much i think he liked the camera too much because he Mm -hmm. said he's he goes and use uranium and all of a sudden he paused he goes yeah i probably shouldn't have said that it's like dude (laughs) there's intelligence agencies like hitting themselves in the forehead and yet Right after that next mission, no one heard from Antarctica ever again. There were no public, there were no more, there were no more news conferences about Antarctica. It was like, no, no, lock it down. And they had to do it in a way which didn't seem obvious because people love a mystery, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not like they, you know, it's like, what'd you find now? There's some some frost giants, you know, where they're where they're giant, where they're snow dragons. What was happening down there? And but but they just quietly out of sight, out of mind just kept it out of the and and the natural hostility of the area kept people from even thinking about going there it's a miserable place so why would it so it made it, it allegedly. Was really, it, allegedly yeah so it made most people choose not to go there by their own free will that and of course the cost so Matt, do you remember I think it's probably really hard to find now but there is a there was a piece of footage that came out um allegedly from the the ISS yeah. where you could see um a huge dark hole yeah in Antarctica. We, Did you see that? 
Yeah, we didn't we didn't give it any credibility at, at all. Um, because well, mostly because again, I like the image. By the way, it was a cool image, and that got circulated a few a few things. I mean, we can filter out some stuff. Other things, it it gets too much traction, and people just run with it. But that one, it didn't. Mostly because we were so critical of the ISS itself and everything about the ISS that how could anything be be trusted from from the ISS at all? I mean, the ISS, uh, the International Space Station, for those of you who don't know what that is, um, there's so many, I could spend, I could spend a whole show just on the ISS, but little things like um, this, this, it took what, 20 years, almost 20 years to construct the whole thing. There isn't a single video of the construction. There's no time lapse of, of, of it being built. Um, but the big thing, which we, we talked about briefly, I think, before we started this, which was the production value on the inside of the ISS is so, it's not even B movie. It is just, it's like, it's like B roll outtake crap, you know, like Christmas, like Christmas party stuff you'd never, ever use in the general public, which yeah, everything from, you know, the, the women having hairspray and having their hair up like the Bride of Frankenstein to CGI errors, huge CGI errors to, to, uh, um, drips of water on the table. Oh, dri or, or glass, yeah, or glasses of water that are sitting there uncovered on the table. Um, layering issues. I mean, bad, bad, really bad stuff. And it's because of what they started with, which is like, people will believe it more if we do quote unquote live, live streams from, from space. But it's like, as any producer will tell you, which is why we just don't do it anymore here. You don't do it live. Do everything in your power not to do it live. And I know they want to talk to school kids and it's like answer questions. Like, are, it's like, are you really in space? You know, that whole thing do that over and over but it just has aged terribly by the way the the hair thing bugged me to no end because it wasn't just that they permed their hair or used hairspray to put their hair straight up if anyone knows anything about but air fil filtration systems the last thing you would have is long hair everyone should be wearing caps like like swimming caps in a in a public pool and a big long necklace that's oh yeah yeah the the necklace thing um the, the hair fil the the filtration system or you know i i had subject matter experts call me up in fact i've got a wonderful subject matter list i'll, I'll give to you in a second which is there was a, a guy that worked for a company a defense contractor that made seals for submarines and deep sea diving things he's going you don't know how precise those things have to be they have to be machined mm -hmm. there has to be a machine shop on site every navy ship major navy ship has a machine shop on board so they can machine parts right then and there he's going but they're huge they're extremely heavy they generate a they take massive amounts of power create massive amounts of smoke that have to be vented out he's going where's their machine shop there he goes how are they getting the parts to you know for these seals and not he goes not only that he's going it should be treated like a submarine right you know where you go submarines you've seen the movies where you open one door you shut the door behind you you spin the wheel and you go because if something goes wrong in the submarine you don't want the whole sub to flood you want compartments to flood right mm -hmm. for the iss they don't shut the doors ever because it's again producers produce you know the the lies of television as carrie the late carrie fisher said if it's on television it's not real because they don't want to screw up the 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 tv value so you it'll slow everything down to do the doors open and shut even though safety procedure wise they're going against number one safety rule which is if a micrometeor passes through the iss the size of a nickel they're all dead. Oh, uh, by the way, that's another thing in the movies which they don't change, which is the pressure differential. You guys can run this video and take in two seconds. T type in um, um, vacuum versus steel rail car. It's a, like a 20-second video. It's absolutely, and the Germans do this every year for whatever reason, where it's a steel rail car on a, on a train, and they apply a vacuum field to the, in the inside of it. It crushes like, like Godzilla had stepped on it in a fraction of a second. You can't even tell you know, the exact moment when it happens. So the question is when, you know, why, why, when they have a pressure leak on the ISS, why are they all alive? They'd all be dead instantly, mm -hmm. right? A vacuum field, it's not like the movies. The end of Aliens, by the way, is ruined for me forever. Or Sigourney <laughs> Reaver, the, you know, climbing on that ladder. She's got space behind her. There's things flying around. Yeah, watch this, hit play. That's steel, by the way, that's not aluminum. Ready? That's it. That's what a vacuum chamber does. That's the whole car. That's basically the inside of the ISS with a small hole in it, right? 
That's that's what would happen to the ISS. So we're you know yeah. the idiots. I mean the, the reverse, reverse of that. Submarine. The only reverse. It would explode. By the way, which is a whole other thing. Which somebody brought a military guy brought this up to me recently, where he says he's going. You realize submarine how thick submarines are, right? And they can barely make it to a thousand feet, right? They're really really thick. He's going. The, I go. You reverse that. You could take a submarine into space. It probably hold up pretty well, right? If it was a vacuum up there. So why is the SS ISS intact? That's just aluminum and plastic. How is the ISS accounting for the pressure differential? It should just explode instantly. And it's not. It's there's no steel. Even if you use titanium, which would be incredibly expensive, it wouldn't work. It's not thick enough. Didn't it so have I, a hole as well? Wasn't didn't it, it did. have like a, a a situation where it was supposed to have yes. a I, I caught yeah. it live. Um yeah. I caught that live Lee. Um it's it's up on the channel somewhere. I think yeah. it's private. Yeah, we um, use we use and they use the picture, the picture that they released for the hole that was in the ISS. You could probably Google image that where a hole in ISS. That was we absolutely debunked that in two seconds because they used a hole from an album cover. They didn't even draw their own hole. They used I it from an album. Like that. I, yeah. Yeah. I remember I remember that. I remember I, that. Like the I can't remember. It was an old band. I don't know if it was Floyd. But it was it was it was from an album cover. It's like really, you just grabbed an album cover, you lazy sons of bitches, and and just photoshopped it and put and put it off. It's like, oh look, it's a hole inside the ISS. It's like you tards. Well, the reality is, I think for the heirs, if that was the if that was the truth, there's a, you can only have so many people that really know. You can only well, have so many okay. people that know to pull at it. You know what I mean? So you're gonna get that lapse of error because typically, the people who get clearances aren't always the best people for the job. Mm, right. Like making bad that. video, bad AI videos of princesses. Yeah, like oh, making oh, bad yeah. AI videos of princesses. Well, you are we, dead. Remind me to talk dead. about the princess thing before we go off, because I want to. Yeah. I want to mention that really fast, because mm -hmm. I talked about that a couple couple weeks ago. The um, what, what you're talking about, Dave, the compartmentalization. The the worst part about compartmentalization is yes, you are still subject to one of the laws of production, which is the weakest link. You don't know who it's going to be. It's probably just some chucklehead. Which it's one's usually that? Ollie. It's usually Ollie. I yeah, hear it probably Ollie. Ollie. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That crap. Oh my god. Oh, by the way, you know the Japanese built their or the the Chinese built their own ISS in supposedly eighteen months. Again, with no footage of, of it being built whatsoever. And it's like, oh look, here we are inside our own ISS. It's like, come on. At least we're trying, right? Um, when it comes are we? to. Are we? Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you the 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 example, Dave, um, which is. You guys probably know this, or if you don't, you know, look it up, Be because it still applies, which is the original Lord of the Rings, right? Fellowship of the Ring. Made it from inception all the way to the theater, all the way to the theater, went through all that production. And then when the the, the first theater cut, and you could probably find it online, the first theater cuts out. Some guy's watching it in the theater. Everyone's focused on the hobbits. And all of a sudden, some guy, I don't know, dropped his piece of popcorn. Looking up at the corner of the screen, there's a road with a white car driving through it. Okay? And all of a sudden, he calls somebody, he calls somebody. It's like they had to recut the movie just to, you know, just like, oh, my God, we got we to gotta fix this shit, right? Because it's like, oh, hey, look, it's a car driving in New Zealand. So the question becomes, Think about how many people, the thousand people that went through that movie, the dailies they had to watch, how many times that piece of footage was watched over and over and over again by all these people, the editors and the sound guys and the proofs. That there's assistance. Their literal job is to find inconsistencies. Nobody caught it because they were watching the freaking Hobbits, right? Mm. So when it comes to space stuff, oh, God, yes. Are you kidding? They, they miss stuff all the time. Well, I, mean, I, the, I don't the believe they have a lot of people cleared. No, uh, for anything. Like no. it, if you find the people who have clearances for everything, are usually the last people you would think. Right. Even like, yeah. Even the astronauts. To to your point, even yeah. the astronauts, uh, which is why I I feel bad for them sometimes. So like the Apollo astronauts, if you've ever watched the '80s movie, you haven't. I highly recommend it called Apollo 13, which was oh, yeah. the recruiting process. Yeah. It was a great movie, right? Three three hours and change long, right? It was basic, but you realize what when you got to the end of three and a half hours or whatever it was. What did they really do? 
by the time they got there, it's like one, they showed one shot in like low earth orbit and that was it, right? They, there was no moon program. It's like, wait, where's the part two? Where's the actual Apollo program? Never happened. And I actually mentioned that in the clues. It's like, it's never going to happen. Well, many years later was when they finally came up with first man with uh, Ryan Gosling, which I still haven't watched, which I, well, I don't want to. But the point there was the, those Apollo astronauts, which I do think that movie was straight up. They were trying to hire heroes, you know, these Boy Scouts and trying to get these guys, you know, make them make them into strong American heroes. And I think they leveled with them. I think they told them. Oh, it's yeah. like, OK, you're going to be faking this. Here's why. And I think between the weight of what they were told and the fact that there were parades everywhere they went and schools named after them, weighed on them. It's for those type of guys, you know, there's, it's tough to get credit for stuff you didn't do especially when it's constant, right? It's like, hey, you went to the, you're a hero. When it, people just keep walking up to you, it's like, oh my God, you know, tears in their eyes. And my, my little Jimmy wants to grow up to be just like you. That eventually it's going to wear on them. And then most of them turned into basket cases, right? They, you know, they drank. I they didn't... That, that adulation whilst knowing that you lied to the entire planet. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, they that's that's they it. Cracked. They were all freaking train wrecks. And so I think what happened after that was every astronaut after that was basically Air Force officers, usually colonels or higher, usually. I mean, we even had some lieutenant gen generals, if I'm not mistaken. But you treat them like spies. Mm -hmm. If you've watched spy movies, and you know what I'm, where I'm going with this, which is, okay, you've seen the stories where it's like the spy shows up at the hotel, right? It's like, okay, the rifle's in the bathroom. You're going to shoot outside this window. You're going to shoot this guy over here, right? And this is the picture of what he looks like. That's all you tell him. You don't tell him what the political intrigue is about it and who he slept with and who he betrayed it. No, no, no. You're shooting that guy. That's all we care about. You shoot him, let him know you shoot him, or if you missed and if you have any change of heart, well, we're probably going to shoot you, so make sure you get it done. Imagine that, but with the astronauts we have now, right? So it's like now they're officers. And they say, oh, hey, uh, you're going to fake something. You don't have the clearance to know why. You're mm -hmm. just going to fake it. And believe me, it's for your own good. Uh, let me use a line really quick. Uh, I did a show um, out in the UK. I can't remember what it was called. but um, Was it this morning? You, I remember you were on this morning. Was that? But that was with that Phil Scanholly, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I also did. That was later. That was one of my last trips over there. Um, it was with uh, Piers Morgan. Um, Oh, oh, it's good, I'm good morning. sorry for you. We apologize for him. So That's all right. <laughs> it was one of the only times I was intimidated before I got on because I had watched him over the years. And it's like, oh, my God. He just if he wants to harass you, he will just harass you. And I'm he, thinking he's he, just going to talk to you. Gotta go, you got to go full Alex Jones, man. You got to go full I, Alex I, Jones. Uh, I, it, it, but then I, at the last minute, they say, oh, yeah, by the way, just so you know, I mean, I had the producer in my ear. He goes, um, one of your astronauts, Terry Virts, is going to be sitting next to him. It's like, what? It's like, okay, this is going to be interesting. So at one point, you know, because again, journalists, they try to, they try to go for controversy. And Pierce said, he goes, he goes, are you calling your American friend here? You know, your, your fellow American, a liar. Are you calling Terry a liar? And I go, no, I'm not calling him a liar. He's a soldier. He's a full bird colonel in the U S military. He goes, you don't get to make colonel unless you know how to keep a secret. So no, I'm not calling him. In fact, he's just doing his job, right? And that and and that kind of Pierce didn't know where to go with that, which was fine. But that's what I firmly believe, which is yeah. which is every astronaut now is just a military, you know, a soldier that is following orders. And for the most part, and remember, there's not only are they psychologically screen nowadays, so they don't crack up, but they're also tagged immediately, meaning their emails monitored, their phones are monitored. And probably their spouse's phones. If there's even a hint, you know, if Terry was like, you know, texting somebody, it's like, I don't know, I'm feeling kind of guilty about this. Oh my God, they'd be absolutely on him with both the, the carrot and the stick and say, uh, um, it's, hey, dude, you fall, you, this is what you sign up for. And the reason why you can get away with it is our court systems are different. I don't know what it's like over there. I'm pretty, it's pretty serious, I think, over in the UK too, which is civil court over here is different from military court treason is a very scary word with tree if you're accused of treason you can you know they'll they'll lock you in a room and throw away the room sometimes they, they no one will ever hear about it it's not public it's not like oj oh no 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 it's like all of a sudden that guy's hey whatever happened to terry i don't know he did a show in london and never saw him again 
Well, there's anyway. also there's also another thing that when you're in clearance land, like you get say you get into Q clearance land, which is all nuclear stuff, right? Right. Because um, there's also crypto, which would be bad too. But the beauty of that is, like, if you were in heavy into crypto and you became old, and your mind started to go, no one cares anymore because the technology advances at such a rapid pace. What you used to know doesn't right. really matter. Whereas if you're one of these Q guys or one of these other dudes who's a trigger puller, not a thinker, you yeah. know, you tell them where to go, what to do, whatever. If you're one of those guys and you have that details rolling around in your head and you start to lose it when you get older, this is the this is one of the dirtiest secrets of the United States government no one talks to. Those guys just disappear from nursing homes. Yeah. Mm. The, one of my yeah. favorite yeah. Yeah. people walk in to visit them. No one's in the room and they're checked out. And no one knows what happened. The, you cannot have him walking around. Yeah. The rules of the clearance people are different. They are, and they're brutal in a way, but at the same time, I can't really criticize them because look, that's how it is. It's like, you know, there are certain secrets. There was a wonderful one of the few secrets that I think ever got out. And I would, you probably remember this one, or maybe you don't. I, one of my, the, the last president I give a crap about over here was uh, Dwight Eisenhower, you know, the, the allied commander for World War II, Ike. And there was this wonderful story about one of these guys in a nursing home who was a military guy who served under Ike. And apparently Eisenhower was, he was, it was in his, his administration when they were just finishing up Groom Lake, right? Mm -hmm. the, when Groom Lake, Groom, Groom Lake 1.0. And he didn't know, right? He was wearing a suit, you know, sitting in the White House doing his thing. And he calls, he calls him up because, you know, he had their phone number. <laughs> he calls him, he says, hey, I'd like to come out and see what's happening out there, right? And they say, yeah, sorry, you don't have clearance anymore. Correct. I mean, yeah, when you were a five-star general, you had clearance, but yeah, you're just the president now, right? You Even don't... then, generals do not have that kind of clearance out there because it is operated by a private military. There, the contractors there you go. Are not, it's ran out of the Department of Energy, and nobody has clearance to tell the Department of Energy anything. There They're you go. the ones who run all the labs, all those cool secret bases, yeah. and you would literally have to run a tank division out there, and then you may not win. <laughs> That's the, and and you probably know how where this is gonna go. I do. Which know. Is, I'm very is, familiar with the situation. Yeah. This this fall the follow up story was because you know he was a little bent out of shape at this. You know when you go from being the Allied commander, right, mm -hmm. the the guy that launched D Day that signed off on it, to you know just the guy who's riding a desk in the White House. He goes. So here's what's gonna happen. <laughs> He's going. I'm gonna call some of my buddies. Like this guy over here. He runs. Still runs the First Army. Yeah, he, he and I were, you know, were friends back in the day, right? We're going to roll in there and we're going to take a look. You know, we're going to do a, our own tour. What do you think about that? Right? And they, you know, there's clout versus clout. And, and they're like, yeah, okay, fine. So, and, and that is why current facilities are so heavily armed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in that, case they, somebody... they are literally equipped to fight off a military presence of the United States, not an sure. enemy. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. So I think he was the last president that ever could pull those sort of strings. And everybody else since then, they just got weaker and weaker to where now they're just almost marionettes, really. On a, on a fun note for anyone listening, though, all those facilities actually do have massive areas of weakness where they're not monitoring. The problem is if you don't see them monitoring that area, it's because they don't have to worry about it. There's yeah. very bad things in this world putting off millions of rads an hour and you don't want to walk through it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Again, Word of the wise. I, I am. I am a fan. I understand. When I'm, I'm kind of an anti-conspiracy person sometimes, and by that I mean a, a conspiracy. How I qualify a conspiracy is if I can't improve on it. And I know that makes me, you know, it, it seems like I'm, I'm doing an ego thing when I say it's like, no, I'm a fairly clever problem solver. If I look at a conspiracy, I say, oh yeah, that's how I would have. I put myself in their shoes. And if I couldn't have done any better than them, like the Titanic, we could talk about that all day. Mm -hmm. It's like like the Titanic being an insurance fraud thing. It's like, oh yeah, no, I totally get it. Absolutely, I absolutely get why why they did it. Mm -hmm. Secret people get bent out of shape because it's like, oh, we can't, we're not allowed to look around Area 51. It's like it's a secret military base. You don't get to go <laughs> in there, right? That's the whole point. It's like, yeah, the signs are intimidating, and it's like, I know you want to know because the X Files told you, and all the nerds want to know. Or the the you know the the if I if I had one wish from a base thing I I wouldn't even be Area Fifty One it'd be the um you probably heard of it the the hallway of nightmares in uh, the Dulce Dulce base New Mexico yeah, yeah. that if that was, thing if there was one place I could tour that wouldn't be it either the hallway of nightmares no that wouldn't or, be. <laughs> uh, I 
I shouldn't say. No, no, no. <laughs> I'd we'll, 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 we'll talk after we're done. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Keep, keep, yeah. keep going. What else you guys got? Mark, you do, does does the Flat Earth community talk about UFOs ever? Not much. I mean, we we like them. I mean, they're they're fine and all. I mean, I love I love UFOs because I was a big night vision guy. Uh, there was a, there was a UK thing I watched years ago where at the very end it was just some generic thing where you know the guy was silhouetted but it was a heavy british accent he goes you want to see some weird stuff get some night vision start looking at the sky i'm going mm -hmm. oh that sounds like a wager so mm -hmm. i i started shopping around and and night yeah get binoculars not monoculars and i bought some some cool ones they're actually much better now the, the americans finally caught up but i was buying them out of russia and um belarus to be specific gen ones yeah gen ones yeah absolutely I'm gen ones that absolutely yeah gen you don't need gen twos and gen threes to, to watch that stuff oh because... you want gen three if you're well, not running all right, all right. i'm i'm not Ooh. i'm not throwing down that sort of cash for, for that uh, I mean, and i watched ufos with yeah, the did. gen three pbs 14 setup and saw some and cool stuff. Mean, yes yeah I, I think we saw seven yeah, guys in the space of two yeah hours, but i live hours. near a, a military secret facility <laughs> i was living in boulder colorado which is just i mean you know it's the backup headquarters of the united states in case dc mm -hmm. falls which if you, if you watch the movie um apparently it's going to the um i, I can't wait to watch that movie when it comes out uh, or when it's out as a war of, it's out uh civil war yeah it came out yesterday the um the when i was when i was watching with night vision you know, I knew I knew exactly where DIA was, so I knew the the inbound and outbound routes. Mm -hmm. And these things were flying at least twice the height. And initially, I thought they were satellites because they were they were flying. They seemed to be about a hundred thousand feet or, or more. But then all of a sudden, I was going, oh, "Okay, this is boring." There's just a lot of satellites, right? That you can't see with the mm -hmm. naked eye. And then all of a sudden, I watched a group just stop in midair, and then like they were lost or looking for directions, and then go ballistic and and veer off at a at a high rate of speed. I'm going. Well, what the hell's that? And then I just kept going. It was addictive. And I started, this was yes. before, like a few years oh, yeah. before. So I was laying out like in the snow on, on an AstroTurf soccer field, like at 3 a.m. watching stuff just, just because it was so cool. And I got really hooked on it. But yeah, this guy's just freaking crawling with stuff. During lockdown, me and my buddies would get together and uh, get our cool uh, Team Windy helmets nice and uh lock our <laughs> we just lay in the backyard and stare yeah and, yeah it was it was it was amazing it's yeah. it's always been amazing yeah but yeah. but the general the general community doesn't get into ufos just because there's so many other things to get into i like them but but that because i was into it before i got into flatter yeah um but but if you ask the if you went to a conference and said hey average flat earther you, you believe in ufos they they'd say yes but then you'd run into probably like what you guys run into 20 different reasons of, of or 20 different explanations of what they are and who they are and where they come from and you know everything from the galactic federation to you know just you know a side alphabet agency of the united states government i go well that's a bunch of crap sorry one more thing really quick on, on that line because I, I gotta throw this in there it was brought up in ancient aliens but i knew about it before they ran a show on it which was my favorite of all time it's still got to be the um the 1561 nuremberg event Yes. which has its, has its own wiki page and it's gorgeous and it's it made so much sense to me but it raised so many questions meaning in fact even ancient aliens left out a part which was why are two giant flying aircraft carriers battling over nuremberg germany in 1561 you know on a beautiful cloudless day and then who was that third faction that showed up you know the the giant the single giant black angular craft that pulled up in between them and then these guys scatter like the sharks and the jets that's a west side story reference and then um uh the uh the the, the black angular craft hangs out for a little while and then flies away i mean that raises questions about hierarchy it's like who are these guys they got the cops were, were they the un but, but more than that which was what sort of response time is that it took them an hour to get there it's like i can shoot a gun out this window and within six minutes there's going to be red and blues, <laughs> you know, pulling up this driveway. But for an hour, these guys are doing a full military engagement. They must have found a, a, a dead zone, kind of like what you're saying out at Area 51, something it wasn't tracked. It's like, oh, look, Zone 58 isn't being watched. Let's let's rumble. Let's go there. It's yeah. like, OK. And then the Vorlon show up. Tell yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the question on UFOs yeah. kind, of, kind of leads to the next question, because yeah. I, I've I've seen I've seen the model, 
Um, and it's got the wall and it, some of you guys think it is just that, yep. that it drops off. Yep. But a lot of you are starting to think there's something after that and there's different land Ponds. realms. Right. What, yeah, different ponds. Where, where, where do you sit with them? I could go, well, I mean, I could go, I'm not going to shoot down either because... I mean, honestly, when when you get outside of this world, outside of this barrier, I mean, it's it's all open for discussion. However, uh, could you? I mean, it leads into some very intriguing possibilities. One is: Are there other domes, multi layers of domes with other continents? Because then it leads into: Who are the guys that are flying around, like the sharks and the jets, or the or what'd you call them? The the black ones, Vorlons. Vorlons, yeah, the Vorlons. So we'll just use the Vorlons as an example because they're the the higher of the three. So are the Vorlons allowed to come and go from lands outside of this place or are they trapped in here with us? And they're just an old civilization that has a rule to follow. I tend to lean towards this is a self-contained system and you would have what sort of, you know, a domed world and then another domed world, another domed world. But I don't think they can cross pollinate. I just don't think they can because... I think it'd be too iffy, kind of like the the we'll we'll use another movie reference, uh, the original "The Day the Earth Stood Still," not the Keanu Reeves version. I mean that that one's fine, but the, which is the you know the the federate the the Federation shows up and says, "Oh yeah, by the way." Now, granted, it was a space reference, but they said you humans aren't aren't allowed to go anywhere. So then goes because you're too dangerous. So the question is, are we a box of kittens that are being protected by from something that's on the outside which we can't get to or are we a box of scorpions that should never ever be allowed to get out ever? Hmm. I think go ahead. I have an interesting response to that is I was aware of a a friend's contact that used to retired from the NSA. Yeah, and uh, when they were doing the server overhauls and whatnot, like networking, he was important in that. And he, at that point, he was a contractor for them. Yeah, and you're seeing the data that's going through, right? And he's just kind of looking, you know, because Ooh, I shouldn't be looking at this. Yeah. And he stumbled on something that changed his life. Stopped going to church, messed him up. Took him a long time to pull it together. And on his deathbed, he told his kids that uh, aliens are real. We're the bottom of the food chain. Yeah. Um, and then he just kind of wandered off staring at the wall and he's like there's more but you don't want to know which and come on we we kind of are in a way but i think there's rules so kind of like and i there seems to be be, and and i use the the nuremberg event as one of those issues which is a you aren't for whatever reason if the place is crawling with things and i do believe because i've seen them like mm-hmm. sky's crawling with crap but they aren't allowed to land on a regular basis like they're not going to show up in the middle of indianapolis come out and take some selfies and sign some autographs shake hands and that sort of thing mm-hmm. because direct involvement and i know i'm stealing from star trek here but come on you had to come from somewhere right the, the we prime direct- from babylon 5 it's fine <laughs> there you go the the prime directive right which is you're not allowed to mess with the current surface dwellers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i kind of treat it like graduating from we'll we'll say high school over here right mm-hmm. it's like once you graduate you're not encouraged to come back it's like but you got to leave eventually like every civilization has a limited amount of time and then eventually you got to graduate one way or another but either way it's like look we have another class coming in you don't have to go home but you got to get the hell out of here and that's it, right? You know, very, in fact, it's very, it's highly discouraged for you to come back from, from when you graduate and intermingle with, you know, the, the classes that are currently there. Now, that being said, can you pick off a few guys in a rowboat? Sure. Some hikers that got lost? You bet. A military squad that has no idea where they are? Sure. You can get those guys all day long, right? Because it, it doesn't really affect much. But, I, but, engaging with the general population i think it's also changed once it's adapted since our camera technology and recording technology has gotten so so much better uh back in the day you know 1561 nuremberg germany it's like okay fine you can sketch out i mean yeah they sketched everything out but you haven't seen what name something that anyone's ever done in the last um i don't know 80 90 years since yeah. camera technology has, has gotten better they haven't and that's because people they're afraid, you know, of course, they tease UFO stuff in the news all the time. Mm-hmm. But people still, I, I still think, by the way, that you could come out now, nowadays, like in, in the, the, I mean, you saw what happened with Roswell. 
right? Roswell was was going to that was that was a nightmare. And, and by the way, did you guys ever watch? I'm sure you guys have the uh, the TV movie Roswell with Kyle MacLachlan. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a, it was a well done show. And the reason why I liked it was I didn't find the plot holes in it because I didn't think there were any. Everyone acted like they were supposed to. Of course, the rancher was going to get upset. But he's like, what the hell is this shit, right? <laughs> it's like, get the drives into town, pointing fingers. It's like, get this crap off my lawn, right? And and the military is like, I don't know, what is it, right? right? And all of a sudden, you've got the, the guy that didn't get the military commander from the local base who didn't get the glory, who's like, my God. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a hero. Look, look, I got myself an alien ship, right? And by the time the Pentagon figures it out, the Pentagon's like, oh my God, we got to, we got to start, you know, spinning this thing fast because the people started freaking out. But nowadays, I think because everyone's got an alien movie reference going all the way back to the 1950s and nobody alive right now, there's a reference for every age group that I think you could, if it was introduced gingerly and you got the story straight because remember there's six billion smartphones now in the world right? more smartphones than people that have running water you could spin the narrative and get everybody on the same page relatively to where the the truther community would be a very minor voice by comparison mm -hmm. you know look real fast sorry one, one last thing my thought train's going all over the place here look really quick at how fast the kate middleton thing was squelched once that video came out mm -hmm. you know it was did it have holes in it problems with it you bet it did right mm -hmm. but the average person for the 95 percent of the population they didn't see him and so it's like oh there she is hey she looks okay she's saying the right words that's it i'm done i'm gonna sleep well tonight meanwhile it took a few days for our guys to go through frame by frame it's like okay i see what's going on here but but for the most part, the population did. Same thing you could do with aliens. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the argument I put is, okay, let's say an alien you know, group did show up in the middle of um, uh, whales, for example. You'd have two schools, two groups of people. One would be the heavy nerds that would come in mm -hmm. and say, see, they do look like the blue people from Avatar. You owe me five bucks, right? And it would be like this big nerd fest where people would be you know, taking all sorts of selfies. And the other group, which would be the scarier group, would be like, we must worship the blue people. We must start building blue people churches immediately. And you know, who who is against us? So sorry, right, there you go. I know I'm rambling. Go. Mark, yeah. why why do you think um why are they covering it up? It, you know, it, if it's flat, yeah, why can we not know this? You know, I I, I hear I always hear control used a lot. It's so what is the what do you believe the true reason for this is? Oh, I know the true reason, and that's because again, I'm I'm put myself in the other people's shoes. C could you tell the general population? In fact, I'll, I'll name drop. I asked Piers Morgan this actually, because uh, he goes, "Shouldn't the people have a right to know?" I go, "Really, Piers? Really? You'd break that story if you were the only one to have it. You know what might happen, but you'd break that story." We couldn't break that story in 1960. So remember, it, it, for the people that are listening here, even our best and brightest people, because this world wasn't built by us. It was built by something bigger than us. I and mean, if you want to say advanced civilization, great. If you want to say divine power, you know, Santa Claus in a bathrobe on a Sunday, that's fine too. But either way, it wasn't built by us. So if our best and brightest didn't figure it out until 1960, because we didn't literally have the technology to figure it out in 1960, do you tell the public? Which is, again, leading to your cover up ollie which is no you don't because well not for a while because you have to figure out until you can spin the narrative exactly how you remember roswell didn't go smoothly imagine something way way a thousand orders of magnitude bigger than roswell think of th think of three things real fast universities would be in chaos for years because uh, astronomy and astrophysics those would be gutted for god knows how long and the remaining um uh, disciplines, hydrology, archaeology, geology, by whatever it is, anything with anology next to it, that have to be re libraries would have to be emptied and repopulated. That's every university in every country. That's a nightmare. Economically, you'd have to suspend world markets for a while because you don't know what it means. I mean, our, our world markets are twitchy enough as it is. Uh, but the big one would be the spiritual aspect of it, the religious aspect of it. I mean, and you're giving 
leverage to the five major religious houses of this world, right? Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, all leverage against science at the same time. And you're asking them to, to show restraint against, against science, right? That, that's been beating them over the head with textbooks for five centuries. It wouldn't, it would be, oh my God, can you imagine what they do? It's like, okay, so you were wrong about this thing that was really, really important. You know what? Let's not stop there. Let's revisit a couple other things that you may have been wrong about. I don't know, carbon dating, uh, evolution, the Big Bang Theory, dark matter, and just go on. The science would never be able to recover. So it's not what they would stand to gain. It's more for what they would stand to lose. And it's not necessarily control. It is potential breakdown of the system. And if you want to call that control, that's 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 fine. But they... I. People in power, what I've learned about the authority over the years is they don't take chances. They, if they, in fact, there's again line from heat. If there is a doubt, there is no doubt, right? You know, you, you even if there's a ten percent chance that the population starts running through the the streets with pitchforks and torches, you can't tell them. Now, you table it. You you have that discussion. You know, the the men in men in black. You know, the Illuminati smoking. Everybody's smoking in a really really dark room. You know, and somebody mentions that and somebody says, OK, we're going to revisit this sometime down the road when we um, uh, it can't, in fact, that was in Roswell, by the way. Remember that line from Roswell, the movie where that one general, I think, or was a politician, it was a politician. He's like, we're going to tell him eventually. Right. And then people's like, yeah, yeah, we'll tell him. Yeah, sure. They had no intention of telling him. Do I think that I mean, there's a reason why Flat Earth is being allowed into social media. I think right now we're doing all the legwork for him. I personally think that eventually it's going to come out because there's something bigger than flat earth out there. There's a couple things, you know, one would be the introduction of an older civilization, you know, our predecessors, right. Or, uh, you know, if you want to say the divine, but that's fine, but really you're kind of splitting hairs, you know, one man's advanced overlord is another man's deity. Hmm. So that, that, that's my thing. That's why you don't tell people, look, I wouldn't tell people in 1960. Would I tell them now? Sure. I think you've got pretty much a good handle on people that you could keep them from running through the streets. Gen Z, you've got them under thumb at this stage. So, and, and Gen Alpha after them. So I don't think it'd be that big of a deal now. I mean, it'd be epic. There'd be a lot of headlines for it, but uh, I think you could do it without losing losing the whole thing, potentially. The, um, the you, you talk about like ancient civilizations and the like what what what's come before us yeah. because i feel the um the rise of the uh, people talk about tartaria and like this a ancient global well, i mean depending on who you listen to ancient or not or not as ancient as you think it might be right um like global seafaring technological civilization yeah that to me feels like very much like the the way the flat earth came around because because they like the flat earth uh, theory came around like you said like nine years ago and then it exploded and it was everywhere yeah and like i heard the like people a couple of people talk about tartaria and now all of a sudden it's like every third video on tiktok or you know it's yeah. the and it 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 does it it, it feels like very similar i was just wondering whether you think there's any sort of connection or, or you can see the similarities between oh, the two. I do. I, I really, really do. Um, I, I've said since the beginning, I said that, uh, look, Flat Earth w was helped. We weren't, We didn't just come up. This wasn't necessarily organic. Now, the way it spread was relatively organic, except you saw the software thing where all of a sudden the algorithms were promoting this really heavily. And if you know anything about intelligence networks, they could have shut us down. They could have turned the dial in the opposite direction just as easy. They could have stunted mm -hmm. us to where we, we were non-existent but they didn't. Um, I believe that it is mostly because, because I've seen it. I, I've seen it in so many people, kind of like with the Tartaria thing, which is, or the mud floods or, you know, no trees on flat earth or all the other stuff, which is that flat earth opens your mind up to everything because it's so physically big. It, it, I'm not going to say it necessarily cracks your head open like a walnut, but once you're into flat earth, it's tough to shoot down any other conspiracy out there. Meaning, I, I've, I've told people, I go, look, there was when, before Flat Earth, if, if one of my guys came up to me and said, dude, I'm pretty sure that Elvis is still alive and he's dating Bigfoot. It's like, I'd, I'd be like, get the hell out of here, right? Now, I don't have a leg to stand on. 
because I opened up my day with flat earth. So it's like, you know what? I'll give you a couple minutes. Sure. Throw it at me. What do you got? And that's the same with everything. The, and I've run into a number of people at conferences. Thank God, you know, we have a common thing, which is flat earth, because the discussions, they, they don't necessarily get heated, mostly because there's a lot of drinking. But the, at the conferences, there's a lot of discussion, open discussions where people are like, dude, have you thought about this? Right. And they don't get shot down. And so if all you need is a small group of those people, it'd be like, oh, yeah, Tartaria. Right. I remember when it started. And then all of a sudden it starts cycling up because if they're if the the arguments for make more sense than the arguments against that scale tips and then people run with it. So, uh, I try to stay focused on the basics. But yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're right in that that regard. Now, again, do I think, for example, um, one of those questions might be, you know, are there any shills in Flat Earth? Do you see in like CoIntel Pro people that are in Flat Earth? It's like I don't think there has to be because. It kind of like Neil Tyson, where where it's like, is Neil Tyson in on it? It's like, no, you want him acting absolutely naturally, doing his thing. You don't have to tell him. Need to know basis. Keep him doing what he's what he's happy doing. He does your work for you. Now his handlers might know, but they're not going to tell him because why? Why? Why do it? We've seen what the effect can be. So, that kind of help, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just the the Tartaria thing. I wonder whether um, like he's. Like, like you say, with the, the if if the flat Earth thing ever cracked open, it would be something that was bigger than it that that went I'd, around. I I don't think Tartaria specifically would be bigger, but the reset aspect of it mm. would be meaning because that's one of those admin level things. I'm a big believer, you know, that there's a caretaker, superintendent, whatever you want, you know, that that resides over this place. Be it the the sorry Vorlons. Vorlons. <laughs> Vorlons. But be it the Vorlons or whoever. I mean, Vorlons may be, just be the janitors for this place or, or just rent a cops for all we know. But the the resets are so easy to do in comparison to other things, like compared to like terraforming. Uh, the, because it all comes down to memory and how much is lost in civilizations. Uh, I'll give you two, two, two quick examples. One, I'm sure you guys have watched um, uh, the 1998 movie Dark City from years ago. Yeah. Yep. All right, perfect. Movie. Dark, Dark City, intriguing movie. In it's that references, on that. Oh yeah, I mean, I used a, I used a number of references to. In fact, one one of my clues was literally called Shell Beach, mm -hmm. because I I just love the fact that nobody in the movie, everyone had heard about Shell Beach, no one knew how to get there. They knew almost how to get there, but not quite. Right, and it was all mm -hmm. all came down to memory. But think about what would happen. How quickly things are lost once you get to a technological level. Like if, if there was some sort of weird apocalypse and people went to Cheyenne Mountain or NORAD or, you know, they locked themselves down within 30 years, not even 30 years. Right. So, I mean, general education is gone. Language starts deteriorating concepts, higher concepts start deteriorating to where even at like, we'll just say 40 years. I mean, you know, two generations, two generations, two, two generations. Right. You could come out of that cave with helicopters and freaked the hell out of everybody because no one's even seen a helicopter. Mm -hmm. At that point, you are the advanced civilization. And that's a very, very short amount of time. So when it comes to something like Tartaria or like the older, I mean, yeah, I know people talk about what Machu Picchu and Puma Punku and, you know, Bimini Road and the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Sunga Seas of Japan, of Sunga Seas of uh, India. They're probably not as ancient as we think because you can do a reset really, which is what people have been latching on to recently. It's like, mm -hmm. w could you do a reset and build us up to where we now in what 100 years 120 years it's like hey, if you watch dark city you could mm -hmm. <laughs> you absolutely could do it it's like just bury crap i mean come on we do that in in game editing all the time or would you want to if you were part of the civilization that got to hide would you want to i don't know would you keep saying it's like nah they'll figure it out on their own let's keep doing this thing yeah. Well, I also think that the versions over the years, and I don't necessarily want to get biblical or anything like that, but the versions over the years of this world, because again, why this isn't a one-off, you know, you can re keep reusing this stuff over and over, yeah. which is the, the key has been what the, whoever, whatever sandbox God is running this place learned over time that slowing things down worked. Meaning flying cars and robot servants, sorry, unattractive robot servants and stuff like that, that doesn't do you any good because once people figure out where you are, the whole illusion's lost. 
right? It's like, oh, I live in a, we live in a snow globe, and the whole thing's ruined. The reality show, the fourth wall comes off. So you nobody gets freaking flying cars. You slow everything so far down to like little things, like um, making the oceans three percent salt, for example. You have to be amazed at what that does. If you know anything about ship travel, which is if you can't drink the water you're sailing on, your exploration is stunted. To what in like 90 something, because you remember, you most explorations are come down to how much fresh water you can drink, yeah. and so on and so on. You know, where that sorry, I want to use the biblical reference really quick the Tower of Babel, such a great story, and one of the shortest stories ever, which was the, the first civilization got everything right. They were absolutely, they had the freaking flying cars and the robot servants and the ray guns, and they immediately said, Oh, hey, you know what? We're in a freaking building. You know what? Let's build a bridge up there. See who built it. <laughs> And they build this freaking tower. And then the, the story goes, again, it's very, very short, where the sandbox god looks down and goes, oh, crap, this is not not what we had planned on. It's like, we got, so that's it. You know, language, 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 scatter, 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 get rid of that tower. We're going we're gonna to redo. You know, 1.0 did not last long. Don't know what version we're on, but uh, we're, I think we're pretty much there. Anyway, go I also I also think it's interesting, like, from the reset, that during resets, there's... Yeah. Mennonites are pilgrims that come to restart their own. And when they get here, we have the stories of them burning their ships. These incredible advanced civilizations, like the the oh. Celtic gods that go through it. You got them in Ireland, the Tuatha and all that. And they came in their ships and they burnt them. And they kept themselves separate from everyone right. until they who had the knowledge died out. There you go. Right. But they're they they gave their their progeny a chance to start again. Yeah. So wait a minute. Wait, these these things you're talking about, these eyes, these staffs, these endless pots of food. Yeah. These this sounds like an unbelievable technology that you purposely cast aside. Yeah. To try and let your, you know. That that's why I like the you. um the M Night Shyamalan movie, The Village, so much. Yeah. Underrated yeah. underrated movie because it's the the higher message there was, and I which I try to use in one of the clues was, think of the concept right of how little it took to do this, right? Some some millionaires, not even billionaires, bought a land preserve, set up a town in the 1800s, mm -hmm. told everyone the forest was freaking full of monsters. But the brilliance of that was when those elders died, nobody was lying at that point. Right. Every Everyone in that town could have passed a lie detector test because only the elders knew how it was set up in the first place. Yep. And it could have lasted, in fact, we don't know how the movie ended necessarily, but it could have lasted a long, long time. And all they had to do was change the flight paths so no planes ever flew over them. And so, and, but even if they did, come on, you could make up all sorts of fun stories for yeah. that or religion. But it was brilliant and it was done with, with almost no technology at all. You didn't need a Truman show for that. I mean, again, that was Sh Shyamalan was keen on doing things on a budget and he inadvertently showed what how people could be fooled which leads back to the truman show line which is we believe the world that is presented to us always have we don't we're innocent as a species we don't like believing that people in power would lie to us that's why it works so well you know people lie all the time and we still as a rule we're just genetically coded until we're so jaded you know it's like oh no they would never lie about something like that or maybe they did but it wouldn't be this big and it certainly wouldn't be that big you know like the moon mission or Every war ever, or I don't know, shots in the arm, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. No, I like no. I, I I I am a I am pro uh, jab and vax. Not that I think they do anything good, but I think that we need to start separating those who can think for themselves to those who can't. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, what else? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd like to know what you think. Um, <laughs> just just before we start to start to wrap this up, yeah. What what do you think about this new sort of disclosure movement that's going on? I I, I always kind of ask everyone that comes on this. You know, we've had the, the Congress thing and stuff like that. I mean, the, that that's the thing. Like with the uh, Alien Attic Channel, the we're not, or at least I speak to, speak for myself. Probably probably Dave. I think Ollie is more is more sort of classic still with with the with the alien thing yeah. whereas me and dave might be a little jaded of the idea of spacemen coming from like billions of light years away to come here right um <clears throat> but um we've had all this stuff going on yeah like do you do you think it's going anywhere or do you or is it it was it a distraction 
I don't think it's a distraction. I think nowadays they're testing the waters because with social media, you can do metrics in real time on just about anything you want. That part of social media from a data mining standpoint is genius in that mm -hmm. you can kill something immediately. You know, it's, it's like running a, a pilot television show anytime you want. And looking at the, you know, we don't have to do focus groups anymore. The world is now this giant focus group. Mm. But I don't pay attention to it until the narrative becomes so simple. I see it popping up everywhere. Meaning, um, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean when I, when I talk about the, the general public. The average individual is smart. He, the line from Men in Black. But people are dumb, panicky, and dangerous, and you know it. Which is, the, the, the average group is, is as dumb as a box of freaking rocks. So the narratives that work the most have to be very simple, very short, and they have to be repeated over and over and over again. So when the disclosure thing comes out, it just seems like a, a flash in the pan more than uh, more than anything. I mean, it's like, yeah, I see it. It's like, oh, sure, I see it. But then the headline dies really, really quickly. So the the ones that stick, again, because the the what was the thing, the analogy they gave years ago, the public is like this giant lumbering beast that you have to really, I mean, the the commands you have to give them are very, very simple. I mean, it has to be really for a, a dummy to understand, which by the way, not to be offensive, but the whole reason why the flat, one of the reasons why the flat earth took, took off as fast, fast as it did is because flat earth, the term was so simple. Two, sim, two, two syllables, that's it. Flat earth, right? Doesn't matter whether you love it or hate it. It was easy to remember and everybody knows it from, from a long time ago. Um, but to that, to, to that effect, let me throw one more thing in and at you because I know you don't want to wind down which is I am still a big believer because, again, I come from the tech world, that if this world is flat and enclosed, if we're living in some sort of building, mm -hmm. there's, a, in my opinion, a high degree of possibility that it's virtual, that it's, that it's digital. We're living in some sort of simulation. Every, everything I've ever looked at over the years has screamed that, not just stuff from like the Matrix and the 13th floor, but little things like, like the double slit experiment, um, uh, neuroscience and free will experiments. Stuff like that, where you know psychedelics the, in general, like the what psychedelics in general, yeah, psych psychedelics in general. Um, that which is come on, the, the, the old saying it's like if a tree falls in the forest and you're not there to hear it, does it still make a sound? Didn't understand that when I was a kid, but when you get into the developing world, oh, yeah, it's like, oh no, there's no freaking tree. <laughs> Why is there a tree? You're not over there, there's nothing over there, you know, unless somebody's observing it, it's not there. The question is. Why is that happening? Because we do that in, we inadvertently started doing that in, in developing games and, and, and everything virtual, which is if you're not on the other side of that mountain, if your character's never going to get there, you don't build the other side of that mountain, right? Because you're not there to observe it. Why is that happening here where we are right now, which is the whole premise of the 13th floor, which is when whatever's behind my, but whatever's behind your back right now isn't being rendered fully because you can't see it. Now, I know you're saying, well, I could see it on camera. It's like, fine, the next room. The next room over in, in the virtual world, it's just black. There's nothing there. It's a possibility there's something there, but it's not going to render until you get over there. So the I, I love that concept, but the average person doesn't doesn't resonate. Remember, the, the Matrix is now 25 years old, yep. um, which is amazing. That's it feels crazy. so old. Yeah, that's um, but, but at the same time, the, um, uh, the, the term... People, I can barely get people to, to comprehend the term flat earth, let alone virtual reality or augmented reality or whatever you want. So I'm sorry, sorry, where that leads back to, you're probably wondering where I was going with this. If that's the case, then there's a lot. I'm a big believer of background people, of NPCs, not to be confused with free, yeah. was it Freeman, the, the, the Ryan Reynolds movie, which is kind of interesting in its own right, which is anyone knows anything about ga the gaming world. You populate the entire world with NPCs long before the the first player shows up, because you at, you have to build the environment before they shows up, and those people seem to be very very rudimentary. They they only respond to very simple stimuli. I know I'm hey, you, you no, no, they, they don't have inner monologues. Yeah, no, they don't. Yeah. They don't. I, and you run into them all the time. You know who I'm talking about. I'm not trying to make fun of people. You look at this person. You're going. That person's been doing this particular thing for 30 years. He doesn't seem to have a care in the world. He's eight boosters deep. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Nice one. All right. Sorry. I, I'm going off. What else, what else can I do for you? 
I, 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 I think I think we, I think I think, I, I think I that's like golden, man. We don't want to monopolize too much of the time, and uh, right. our viewership is much like squirrels, and they rotate through. It gets too long, and people are like, "And I'm done." We don't want their <laughs> noses right. well, to bleed. I'll keep it simple. The um, because I I don't like necessarily to promote my own stuff. The con the the community is so no, huge. Well, like oh, yeah. the, between the shadow banning, honestly, if I gave you one thing, they might try to shadow ban that anyway. So um, two things I try to recommend. I mean, well, you already had Flat Earth Dave on there. The app is really, really cool. I, I love it. The Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, which I have nothing to do with. But uh, if you're going to look me up, just go into any search engine and type in Flat Earth Mark. Mm -hmm. It should lead you down a, a rabbit hole that leads you somewhere. And if it leads you to other content creators, great, fantastic. It's not like I'm doing the conferences by myself. There's a whole cadre of people that uh, they go around and do speaking stuff and do meetups and, and things like that. So it's a great community. The only thing I recommend, let me end with this, is look, everything I've been talking about, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not here to convince you or persuade you. I'm just here to put the idea in your head and you have to do your own research and figure it out for yourself. Don't don't come back at me and blame me and say, oh no, Mark did it. No, no, no. You you figure this one out for yourself. I'm just kind of like the, the flatter the drug dealer. More, more than anything else. I'm the guy in the street corner that's got conspiracies under his coat. And it's like, oh, yeah, I got something you may not have seen. A flat earth. That's yeah. why I can't travel internationally anymore. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't give this to just anyone, man. And don't take too much of it. But, you know, don't tell, don't tell anyone where you got it. So there you go. Uh, what conferences are coming up and how can people go to go to them if they want to? Uh, at this point, you're just going to have to wait because uh, it still is April. Uh, there'll be two conferences this year, from what I can tell. There's going to probably be one on the East Coast. There's going to be one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast. So there's going to be one. Uh, I think the sooner one will be in somewhere in California, and that will be uh, Jaronism, I think, is going to be running that. Austin Witsit, those guys are going to be doing that one uh, with whoever speakers they get. And then the other one's going to be run by Karen B., uh, from her channel, which will be in the East Coast. But you're just going to have to look up Flat Earth Conferences or FlatEarthFestivals.com on a regular basis and make sure. It's probably not going to be officially announced for another month or so, I would think. Usually they announce it like early summer. But uh, they should be fun. And a lot of, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a great community. Um, surprising the amount of women that show up. And again, that shows you the, the different part of the conspiracy. We had like 40% women show up at the conferences because – uh, it's not sinister. And the flat earth is a message of hope for a lot of people because, you know, it turns the world, it gives purpose to the universe. So uh, women see through it for whatever reason. They say, oh yeah, it's a happy thing. It's a positive thing. It's like, wow, cool. Great stuff. I wish the UFO community could be like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy, no, man. happy or they, full they of women. Many... It, it's <laughs> tough. I mean, well, no, women, you know, there's, there's a, I don't want, I don't want to end a, a weird note, but you know, there's a, that sales line from that movie years ago, which is, you know, women see through general BS, which is like they, the, the saying is don't pitch the bitch because <laughs> they will see, you know, they have a detector and then, and for the other things, they're like, yeah, it's too dark. It's too sinister. And, you know, everybody's talking like this, talking like Batman. And, um, with flat earth though it's really a positive positive message which is why i stick with it why i've been doing it for nine years That's awesome. well thank you for coming on the show mark it's been yeah. really cool it's yeah it's been really good to talk with thank you thank uh, you thank you pleasure we hope you hope you come back again one day in the future no i don't think so nope oh, ah yeah. damn it every that happens with everybody <laughs> every single person. Yeah, that's uh, they look dave, dave, dave warned me and he goes you're not gonna want to go back and go oh come on they can't be that bad <laughs> But no, thank, thanks. It's been Keep great. Keep with Dave. <laughs> um, is it? We, we, uh, we'll, we'll put the link to your channel in the. Yeah, yeah. Put the link to my channel. It's awesome. Channel. Really, really cool. Yeah. And again, thank, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And uh, you know, stay flat. Pleasure was ours. Yeah, definitely. Not a flat earther, but you know where to get it, people. <laughs> I should have added an extra. T I like your other shirts, by the way. Appreciate that. Thank you. Those are no, those other ones you were flashing. Yeah, that yeah. one's cool. Who who's designing these for you? Lovecraft lady, that's awesome. All these tiny hands. Really? Re tiny, Retro Mothman, the Illuminati rock star. I mean, that should be a concert shirt for some band somewhere. Cool sticker. Looks like a tool album cover, doesn't it? That yeah. does look like <laughs> cool. That is a great album cover. I'm, seriously, if yeah. if you went backwards in time, you could have sold that as an album cover to a rock fan in a blink, blink of a freaking eye. Just so you know, though, we've not sold out to the Illuminati. It's just a t-shirt, people. Oh, that's all but right. Yet we will. Not, yet. 
we're we're <laughs> off we're off air. I'm not going to tell anyone. It's okay. <laughs> no, no, we're we're pretty honest. Should the cash offer come, you're going to know it because we're going to start shilling. <laughs> <laughs> by the by the way, that is one of the guarantees. You know, there people say, "Oh, are there any shills in flat Earth?" I go, "No," because of what you just said there. There's all sorts of guys that would jump on the chance, but. There's just not there. I mean, I would have caught, for example, blessing in disguise. I would have caught so much hell for that McDonald's thing, so much hell for that. But it didn't happen. But other people, yeah. I've I've told people, go look. I will. I if you could strap me to a chair and throw pies at my head, and uh, I would do as long as I could say flat Earth, I'd do it. So, well, on that note, we will. Uh... Are we still live? We are oh, still, we are, we are Sorry. Still no, pants back music. on. Pants back on. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, people. I, I got to get back to the base.